because of this restiveness, the, uh, the president has not set up a government. He's working with the prime minister alone. And of course, you need ministers. President Buhari committed to peace in Ecuador's region, receives reports, pledges to galvanize regional leaders to resolve crisis rocking Republic of Mali. Presidency reacts to Senate resolution on resignation of service chiefs, insists national interest is priority. The stretch is 3.5 kilometers, whereas the bridge itself is 11.8 kilometers. Few days to the closure of Nigeria's busiest bridge, Rex Minister outlines Plan B for smooth traffic. Having scored the highest number of vote casts is hereby declared the winner. Plus, Akaradulu's quest for a second term gains momentum as it emerges governing party's candidate for a new election. Good evening. Welcome to the Network News at 9. I'm Ian Ray John. Reading with me tonight from our Lagos Network Center is Hingino John Adams. Welcome. President Muhammadu Buhari has resolved to consult with key leaders of ECOWAS countries in a deliberate attempt at finding solutions to the crisis rocking the Republic of Mali. The president made a pledge while receiving reports from ECOWAS special envoy to the West African nation led by former President Goodluck Jonathan. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the details. The former president, Goodluck Jonathan, was accompanied to the State House by the president of the ECOWAS Commission, Jean Claude Cassibrou. He briefed President Buhari on his activities as special envoy to restore amity to Mali, rocked by protests against President Ibrahim Boubacar Kaita. A resistance group, M5, is insisting that a constitutional court must be dissolved and the president resign before peace can return to the country. President Buhari promised to make a case for the ECOWAS chairman, President Muhammadu Isufu of Niger, to brief ECOWAS leaders on the matter so as to chart the best way forward towards resolving the Malian crisis for sustainable peace, unity, and democracy. He thanked Dr. Goodluck Jonathan for his comprehensive brief on the situation in Mali. Crisis had erupted in the West African nation after the court nullified results of 31 parliamentary seats in the polls held recently, awarding victory to some other contenders, which the resistance group said was at the instigation of President Kaita. The riots led to the killing of some protesters by security agents, causing the crisis to spiral out of control, hence the intervention by ECOWAS. Because felt that that cannot continue, so I should lead a special team to go again and engage them. The first person we had a discussion with was the, with the president, then the prime minister, and other interest groups. The, the president may even go uh, back to Mali with others. So it's only proper that when you go for such mission and you come back, you have to brief your president. So we came to brief him. Former President Jonathan submitted that ECOWAS can't preside over the removal of an elected president. Not even the African Union or the United Nations can do it, saying leaders must be elected and live under constitutional processes. President Kaita had spent only two out of his second five-year mandate. Because of this restiveness, the, uh, the president has not set up a government. He's working with the prime minister alone. And of course, you need ministers to head major departments of government. For interactions with them and the recommendations, we believe before the end of this week, the, uh, the constitutional court will be in place. They will sort out the 31 seats, and the parliament will also be in place. And of course, the president is already setting up a government of national unity. So if this three is done and the government is running, issues of uh, demonstration and so on, we can manage. And of course, has also set up a committee uh, that will uh, monitor the progress. And some of these great areas will be examined. The former president thanked President Buhari for providing a presidential jet for the mission, thereby making their trips to Mali convenient and comfortable.
From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Senate has advised the service chiefs to step aside and give way for the injection of fresh ideas and tactics in the fight against insecurity. The call for the service chiefs to step aside followed an amendment by Senator Francis Fadahunsi to the substantive motion raised by Senator Ali Ndume on the need to improve on the equipment and morale of security personnel in Nigeria and for related Senate Joint Committee to meet with security agencies. Urge the federal government to urgently intensify the provision of modern equipment to enhance the operational capabilities of our armed forces. That the present crops of service chiefs will step aside for new ideas to come in so as to energize our security system. And to that extent, calls for an urgent scrutiny by the Senate of not only the strategic, the tactical and operational uh, uh, details of operations by, this, by the armed forces. The issue that now faces us is that the readiness of our armed forces to really confront these challenges is now under a lot of pressure. And the loss of every soldier in Nigeria is the loss of a major asset. Our armed forces are trying very hard, just like the president said, the good is still not enough, but we need to continue to encourage them. Senate also passed the Nadrian Ama University Bill Establishment Bill. And still on the service chiefs, the presidency has formally reacted to the resolution by the Senate calling on the service chiefs to resign or be sacked due to security challenges in the country. A statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Karl Shehu, says the presidency notes the resolution but reiterates that appointment or sack of service chiefs is a presidential prerogative. The presidency says President Muhammadu Buhari in his capacity as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, would do what is in the best interest of the country at all times. In other news, former President Goodluck Billy Jonathan has expressed formal appreciation to President Muhammadu Buhari for approving the naming of Itakbe Wari Railway Station after him. Speaking to correspondent Adam Musambu after an audience with the President, Dr. Jonathan assured Nigerians that his relationship with the Nigerian leader is cordial. Let me use this opportunity to commend Mr. President publicly. I've already sent a letter to him uh, appreciating uh, that it's a good gesture. And even the, completing the pro, uh, really pro, uh, uh, program is good. It shows that uh, the President is doing, going on with the legacy uh, projects of previous administrations. So, and that is the way to go. So, I appreciate it and I thank Mr. President, the Minister of uh, Transportation, and all others that made it possible. So, so Nigeria would like, how do you describe your relationship with President Buhari? I mean, you've been seeing me coming to see the President, I will be seeing us having a uh, very uh, uh, friendly conversation. Uh, so, our uh, relationship is okay. Heading to the National Assembly now, President Muhammadu Buhari has submitted the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper to the Senate. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunkwar also reports that the legislators commended the President and his commitment to us a continued harmonious relationship with the legislature. Rising from a one-hour closed-door session, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, read President Muhammadu Buhari's request for the approval of the 2021 to 2023 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. This is to allow the National Assembly enough time to perform its important constitutional duty of reviewing the framework. Senate has reiterated its resolve to carry out oversight on the implementation of the 52 billion naira allocation for the 774,000 public works scheme. We should be looking towards the National Directorate of Employment as the agency that will give us the key performance index and deliver to us. 
this harmonious relationship has been quite productive. It has made the executive to function better because we provide ammunition for the executive to, to work with. We are equally on the same page on this. Distinguished colleagues, let me join our colleagues to commend uh, Mr. President as well. Senate has passed the National Health Insurance Scheme Act Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2020. It approved the report of its committee on basic and secondary education on the need to integrate Almajiri education into a modern system of education. And to enact the National Health Insurance Authority Bill 2020. The Almajiris who are predominant in the north constitute the larger number of out-of-school children. Clark. The president of the Senate announced that the Senate now has a new clerk in the person of Dauda Ibrahim El Ladan from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Similarly, President Muhammadu Buhari has forwarded to the House of Representatives the 2021-2023 medium-term expenditure framework for consideration. The National Assembly correspondent, Lami Ali, has details of this and other matters deliberated upon during plenary on Tuesday. Let me seize this opportunity to express my deep gratitude for the cooperation and support and commitment of the leadership and honorable members of the House of Representatives in our collective efforts to sustain the restoration of the January to December financial year. Presidential communications to the House on MTF, read by the Speaker Femi Bajabiamila says, the early submission of the document is to enable Parliament to perform its constitutional duties. The MTEF provides baselines, parameters and fiscal assumptions for budgeting and development plans. Plenary considered and adopted five reports, among which is the Police Repeal and Amendment Bill. Police Bill 2020 to provide for a framework for the police force to ensure cooperation and partnership between the police and the host communities in maintaining peace, protection of lives and property. A constitutional amendment bill regarding payments to houses of assembly and judiciary from Representative Igari Iduma passed second reading. To reflect the authority of person mandated to effect payments and receive funding from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation. Also passed at second reading is a bill seeking to repeal nuclear safety and radiation sponsored by Anayo Edwin and a bill seeking the establishment of the Federal College of Education, Mungunu, sponsored by House Chief Whip, Mohamed Tahir Mungunu, while a bill seeking percentage increase of derivation fund to 50%, sponsored by Representative Awaji Nombek. Among motions adopted by House members is the need for the Northeast Development Commission to establish skills acquisition centers at IDP camps as moved by Representative Bukhar Ghana. Meanwhile, the House has given 48 hours to Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gozula Pabio, to publish names of lawmakers he alleged got contract awards from NDDC or face legal action. Claim that 60% of the contracts in NDDC were given to National Assembly. Every single particular and detail of those members of this Ninth Assembly that it gave contracts to. This house will bring the full wrath of the law. There are laws in our books for defamation. Plenary resolved to investigate CBN's development finance department in the Nigerian Correctional Service. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. And away from the National Assembly now, the All Progressives Congress says it is in total support that no vested interest should continue to turn the NDDC into an automated teller machine while multifaceted development eludes the Niger Delta region. The party, in a statement by its Deputy National Publicity Secretary, Yakini Nabena, wants Nigerians to support the forensic audit of the 19 years of the NDDC, which includes the first four years of the President Buhari administration, as well as well-meaning legislative inquests for the benefit of the Niger Delta region. The statement adds that the goal of the Buhari administration remains the rapid and sustainable development of the Niger Delta region. The audit must therefore be seen, particularly by the opposition PDP, as a decisive move to clear any stumbling block undermining the development of the Niger Delta region, the statement added.
Now talking politics, the incumbent governor of Ondo State, Oluwaro Tumia Kuridolu, has emerged APC governorship candidate, having pulled 2,458 votes to defeat 11 other aspirants at the primary election. Chairman of the APC governorship primary and governor of Kogi State, Lahaji Yahaya Abelu, announced this at the end of the election. Apiola Ario reports. Over 3,000 delegates from the 18 local government areas of Ondo State voted to elect the candidate of their choice in the October 10 governorship election in the state under the supervision of members of the APC election committee led by Kogi State Governor Yaya Belo. Aside this, INEC officials also monitored the conduct. At the end of the election, the chairman APC Governorship Primary Election Committee, who is also Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello, announced the incumbent Governor Oluwaro Timiakere Dolu as the winner, having polled 2,458 votes to defeat other aspirants. His closest rival, Olusha Laoke, scored 262 votes. In his acceptance speech, Governor Akeredolu said the victory is for all members of the APC in the state. In a matter of hours, I shall commence in an inexorable manner process of reconciliation to heal all perceived wounds. We need one another more in future than now. The governorship election in Ondo State is scheduled for October 10, 2020 in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NTA News. Closure of Third Milland Bridge. Details you don't want to miss. After this message is to stay. You see, as I they talk to you plenty now, because I get glued to I make me the talk. Please, I'll be not be so. All right. Don't be saying I won't talk plenty. You will not say I know they lie. You see this glow? If you get them, you will not go even now. Now go just they talk, they go because it's not dear. Enjoy international calls from as low as 40 cobble per second from Niger to the world. Call your loved ones today. Thank you, my sister. You do well, eh? No. Improved household hygiene is essential to keep your family safe. Did you know that the sodium hypochlorite, the active ingredient in hypo bleach, is equipped to fight viruses and germs? Add some bleach to water, soak a clean napkin in diluted bleach, and wipe off germs from common contact surfaces. Wipe off with hypo. Disinfect your home with hypo bleach at only 25 naira per sachet. Want access to all your favorite local and international shows wherever you go? Here's how. Head to showmatch.com and click try for free for 14 days. Enter your email and create password. Choose your plan and payment method that suits you and start watching. You just opened up a whole new world of non-stop entertainment. Stream online or download the Showmax app to watch on your mobile or tablet anywhere, anytime. Visit showmax.com now. the uniqueness in our kids while keeping them healthy and safe. So kids, stay indoors, wash your hands and enjoy your favorite delicious Indomie noodles. Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition, good for you.
safe and curb the spread of the virus. Take responsibility. The coronavirus spreads from one person to another. Let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason. Take responsibility. Avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions. Obey all the rules that are put in place. Take responsibility. Stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus. There is no known cure for COVID-19. Take responsibility. Observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus. Together, we can do this, but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Good to have you back. Still looking at security, the presidency has advised against people taking laws into their hands, thereby making the job of security personnel more difficult. In a statement, it advised Nigerians that they should report any security breach or threat to peace to the law enforcement agencies. The report. The statement notes that the problem of insecurity, especially in southern Kaduna state, is more complicated than many people are willing to admit. It gives insight into the security comprehensive deployment which southern Kaduna enjoys. It comprises the Army, special forces of both the Army and the Air Force, surveillance aircraft by the Air Force and mobile police units that are on ground on a 24-hour basis to forestall criminality and keep the peace. The president says Southern Kaduna problem is an evil combination of politically motivated banditry, revenge killings and mutual violence by criminal gangs acting on ethnic and religious grounds. It views with concern that revenge and counter-revenge will only create a circle of violence, making everyone else unsafe, especially innocent people. The statement wants the local authorities to radically improve their intelligence capabilities so that security agencies will be alerted in a timely manner to enable them forestall any planned attacks. The presidency, in the same manner, condemns the recent attacks by bandits in Igali, Brenengwari and Igiwa local government areas of the state, while urging security agencies to intensify their response. Less than a week to the closure of the third million bridge in Lagos, the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, is urging motorists to avoid the closed area and take alternative routes for the six-month period the work is expected to last. Joseph Johnson was at the briefing by the Minister on the issue. Sequel to the alarm raised and subsequent checks by experts, the third mainland bridge in Lagos is getting the attention it desperately needs to safeguard it. The Federal Ministry of Works announced its partial closure for work to be effected on the bridge. And the minister, Babatunde Fashola San, in this meeting with journalists, explains the six months period slated for the work. We are closing essentially the stretch of the bridge between Adeni Jiagile and Adekunle, which is the exit to Yaba. So that stretch is 3.5 kilometers, whereas the bridge itself is 11.8 kilometers. Already, the Federal Road Safety Corps has made arrangements to ease traffic and facilitate smooth usage of the alternative routes. I need to work with the Federal Ministry of Works to ensure that this is sustained throughout the, the duration and we are deploying the personnel to for these periods to ensure that uh, a 2019 count by the ministry indicates that Third Mainland is the busiest bridge in Nigeria, with a daily average of 133,000 light and heavy vehicles plying it. Joseph Johnson, NTN News. For more on the news, let's now join Hengino from Lagos. Hengino. Thank you, Yari. The impact of the planned closure of the third mainland bridge on Lagos residents, especially small business owners and entrepreneurs, has 
projected by residents will be overwhelming. Dr. Ogwemi reports that although respondents note the necessity for the maintenance work, they pointed out the socio-economic realities made even more complicated by coronavirus pandemic. Routine maintenance of roads and bridges cannot be compromised in order to avert dangers that may occur if the structural integrity of these critical infrastructure are not preserved, and more so for a bridge like the Third Mainland, which was built over three decades ago. Although the bridge has been rehabilitated on several occasions, the most recent, scheduled to commence on 24th July, has generated a series of reactions. That would make me want to consider not coming to the island to, do, to run my business. Probably I'll have to, for the main time, start considering running only in the mainland. Yesterday, I load you, I spent one hour in Costa before I can go to Aguda. You are, you, you are shutting the only road that carries the heavy traffic, which is Stormyland Bridge. Where do you want us to go? How do you want us to go about our businesses? While these respondents are not enthusiastic about the planned repairs, it is an inevitable event which experts have clamored for. They just have to be, you know, repaired and as urgently as possible. And we still want the serviceability to be sustained. Therefore, there is need for regular maintenance of the bridge. So, in the light of that, we now want to replace all the worn-out uh, bearings and the expansion joint. That one necessitates the partial closure of Third Mainland Bridge. With most small business owners and motorists who commute between the island and mainland on a daily basis already dreading the events of the coming months, one can only imagine the task before traffic management agencies. In Lagos, Dotsun Ogmiami, NTA News. Let's now take you to the Nigerian Correctional Center where the federal government has introduced a new approach to domestic energy at correctional centers in the country. To this end, a biogas system was unveiled at the Kirikiri Correctional Center in Lagos. Uzezi Aruri reports. The commissioning of the bio and liquefied gas kitchen at the Kirikiri Custodial Center is in tandem with the recommended practice for preserving the environment and preventing health complications associated with the use of firewood. This project also reduces the federal government's annual expenditure on sewage evacuation at the custodial center. We are saying thank you to Mr. President Mohammed Buhari, GCFR, who has all this while supported Nigerian Correctional Service in all the programs of, or embarked upon to improve the quality of lives of our inmates and indeed that of the officers and men of the service. Never again shall we be seen carrying sewage material in trucks, in pockets or in uniforms. Gas system converts sewage to gas resources for domestic use, and when combined with liquefied natural gas resources, the outcome is adequate energy for cooking. We take that we have gone into the environment, we capture body more effectively, and we have, you know, we, have, we are saving our environment. So the federal government is reducing Nigeria's carbon footprint by doing this. Thing. This process has also been incorporated into the new 3,000 capacity maximum security custodial centers being constructed in Kano, Abuja, and River States. Okay, it is converting waste to gas. To the gas yes. Is it possible to run out of waste? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's possible to run out of waste. So long as someone eats, he must have to digest it. The federal government plans to extend this project to all custodial centers in Nigeria. In Lagos, Uzezi Arure, NTA News. The news continues in Abuja. In Gino. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says operations are running smoothly and seamlessly in all its zonal offices and its corporate headquarters in Abuja. In a statement, the head, media and publicity, Dile Oyewale, says latest developments in the commission and the subsisting COVID-19 protocols have necessitated a scaling down of activities. Nonetheless, visitors on invitation by the commission are in no way affected by these. The ESC, he says, is deeply committed to the anti-corruption agenda of President Muhammadu Buhari and Nigerians are enjoined to continue to shun corruption and expose corrupt practices. The 
Lagos Parliament has resolved to provide parliamentary support towards a sustained fight against COVID-19. The revival of the economy of member states impacted by the pandemic. On NGA Fine Face reports that Parliament received recommendations on regional health protocols on COVID-19 and effective implementation of community levy, among other businesses. It is the first time ECOWAS Parliament is holding its session on a virtual platform consequent upon the coronavirus pandemic, which was also central to the business of Parliament in the 2020 Second Extraordinary Session. Speaker Sidi Mohamed Tunis considered as impressive the measures adopted by heads of states to address spread of the virus and provide palliatives for the people. The Extraordinary Session, he notes, considers important referrals from the ECOWAS Commission while parliamentarians work assiduously to reflect the interest of the people in decision making. As members of parliament, we have sworn to the people of the sub-region and to contribute towards improving their standard of living. We are going to continue to strive to do so, even with the limitations imposed on us by the present situation. Parliament received messages of support from the ECOWAS Court and the West African Health Organization with a strong case for controlled enhancement of free movement in the sub-region, engagement of community leaders for continued social control measures against the pandemic, and prioritizing budgetary votes for health. We have agreed certain specific guidelines for opening up our borders, and we hope that the parliament will continue to support that. The parliament will be helping to ensure that activities and projects not only respond to the needs of the people. Parliament also received strict application of tax base and rates of levy, respect for timely deposits and direct deposits as recommendations for effective community levy implementation. The session continues with committee meetings and plenary in Abuja on NGA Fine Face and the news. Stakeholders advise to sustain ease of doing business reforms. Details after this break. Your hogs are a comfy place for dropping in, for lazing around, and hanging out. So we've designed our hogs to be just as comfy, with a super absorbent core to lock wetness away, and a soft, flexible waistband. Our most comfortable diaper keeps baby comfy at every angle. We'll never stop finding new ways to hog more like you. Hoggies, your hogs inspire ours. We don't wait for ya! Now you don't shell out. See how they go to the left, to the right. The defender stand up for ground. Go fight to conquer. Plenty things full ground for you. He not the sweepers like this. Oh. No feeling be like this at all. To conquer excitement inside football action. For Go TV, enjoyment is not in sweet pass to watch. Connect live action for La Liga, Serie A, Premier League, and WWE. I see the hold. It does settle. Get Go TV today for 9,200 naira. Where they come with one month Go TV match subscription to enjoy correct sports with the super sports. Go TV, live it, love it. She cried. She cried in anguish and in pain. She bears this scourge of her grief. She toils in vain for justice and succumbs to silence. He gloats over his malady. Like a beast, he pounces with no remorse. Her cry meant nothing. Her pain feeds her shame. Like an orphan, she is left to grief in solitude. But no more will she cry in vain. Her adversaries will henceforth bear the brunt of their bestiality. Rape is evil. Rape is a plague, a pandemic of monumental consequences. We must unite and kick it out of our society. Connect with NTA and stand against rape and rapists. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus. But we can do better. 
The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Thank you for staying. A total of 1,225 batch 29 ratings have passed out from the Nigerian Navy Basic Training School on a River State after completing a nine-month basic seamanship training. Chief of Naval Staff, represented by the Flag Officer Commanding FOC, Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral David Adeniron, passed the new ratings on their primary rule of protecting Nigeria's maritime environment. Kingsley Amajiri reports. A reception and accommodation committee. Those were part of the exercises marking the graduation ceremony. Out of the 1,225 ratings that passed out, 227 of them were females. They were trained in rigorous fiscal naval theory, practical exercises in the areas of seamanship rigging, ship husbandry, among others, for nine months. Why there were restrictions imposed for this year's passing out parade owing to the incidence of COVID-19, the Chief of Naval Staff enjoined the new ratings to be safety conscious and adhere strictly to COVID-19 protocols in the course of their duty. I'm sure you are aware of the exigencies that necessitated the extension of your stay in the school. In compliance with government policy and measures put in place against the spread of the pandemic. Notwithstanding, it is indeed my great honor to review such an excellent parade. The ratings have so far been deployed to their various places of assignment across naval establishments in Nigeria. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. The Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has advised stakeholders to sustain the ease of doing business reforms, stressing that the reforms through the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council is an opportunity to significantly boost local and foreign investment in the country. The Vice President said this during a virtual meeting of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council to review the state of the reforms across a number of government agencies, noting that the federal government will continue to take the opportunity and ensure that more results are recorded. The Vice President described the country as a nation with so much promises and resources, stating that the administration has every opportunity to do something profound about investments in Nigeria, with more focus on how to get the business environment working. Other members of the council expressed optimism that the challenges observed in sustaining the successes recorded in the reforms would be addressed. Minister of Aviation Hadi Sirika has expressed optimism that the Defence Industries Corporation of Nigeria, DECON, has the capacity to produce reliable critical hardwares for the Nigerian Armed Forces and other agencies of government in a quest for national defence, security and the economy. The minister said this during a visit to the industry in Kaduna. Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachukun reports. A display of array of creativity Innovation and indigenous capacity at the Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria, as the factory played host to the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, who was at the industry to assess the ongoing construction of Daikon So Garment Factory for the production of military and paramilitary uniforms and other production sites. The visit Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, acknowledged has changed his perception of Daikon from that of a mere furniture production factory to a critical national security asset with capability of producing enough equipment for the nation's armed forces 
are relevant agencies. I am sure if you bring in a billion dollars in here, you will get uh, value for your money and much more. And this will begin certainly to put Nigeria on world map of technological advancements. And this is for a noble cause. Executive Order 5, which calls for local content production in both MDAs. So we are trying to cash in on this directive of Mr. President to make sure that the uh, defense industry of uh, Corporation of Nigeria affords the Ministry of Aviation all the area of defense-related equipment that are suitable. With improved funding and patronage, Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria, the minister believes, has the capacity to make Nigeria proud in many aspects of national life. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachikung, NTA News. The Executive Secretary, Nigeria Christian Pilgrims Commission, NCPC, Reverend Yakubu Pam, has enjoined state governors to support the commission to improve the standard of pilgrimage exercise. He made the remark while receiving the chairman, governor's forum, and governor of Ekiti State, Kayode Fayemi, who was on a working visit to the commission. Reverend Yakubu Pam solicited the support of state governors to enhance the commission's activities and to fast track the completion of ongoing construction of NCPC office complex. Being the first executive government and chairman of the governor's forum that has come in here, that shows the spirit that is in his heart to make sure that this place come up from the grass as they lifted up so that it will shine for the nation to see it properly. And the fact that you have seen me here is in itself a demonstration that governors are going to support his tenure here. Governors are going to support the commission. Another break back on this point. Sports and other news when we return. Agriculture and food security in Nigeria, plus the ban on maize importation. That is our focus on NT Tuesday Live tonight by 10:30 p.m. Tuesday Live, incisive and educative. Join us. The number of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is increasing daily with many more tests ongoing. The battle of testing, isolating, treating and attending to the affected persons rest heavily on the shoulders of our health workers, constantly putting their lives on the line and at risk to contain this virus, save and protect the lives of millions of Nigerians. To these health workers, we at the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, on behalf of millions of Nigerians, say a big thank you for all that you have done and are doing to the security agencies enforcing the lockdown and every other frontliner. We say thank you for putting your lives on the line to save ours. There is no amount of words that can quantify our gratitude. Thank you. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Welcome back. EPL Top 4 Battle intensifies. Tamara Obiwe has more on Sports Update. The battle for a top 4 finish in the Premier League continues with two matches slated for Wednesday. Manchester United will aim to claim maximum points against the visiting West Ham United in a match that will be beamed live on the NTA Sports 24, channels 270 on Star Times DTT, 433 on Star Sats, and 731 on Free TV at 6 p.m. The other fixture on the night pits Chelsea against winners Liverpool at Anfield. Tamara Ebiwe, NTA News. 
away from sports, the body of late Ismaila Isa Funtua was laid to rest in Abuja. Kolom Mohammed reports that he was interred at the Gudu Cemetery according to Islamic rites. That was the last prayer for late Malam Ismail Isa Funtua, a close ally of President Muhammadu Buhari, a media and business administrator who died yesterday night. With that over, the hundreds of sympathizers accompanied the body to the Gudu Cemetery for burial. We thank God he impacted to the life of so many. Alaji Ismail Isa Puntua has contributed immensely to the development of this country, particularly journalism and then um, industry and uh, even governance. A lot of people may not even know that he was a federal minister in 1983. Malam Ismail Isa Funtua died at the age of 78 years and he was married with children. In Abuja, Kolo Muhammad, NT News. The media, President Muhammad Buhari and Nigerians in other spheres of life, received with shock the death of Malam Ismaila Isa Funtua. Monday night. The late elder statesman and veteran journalist was a life patron of the International Press Institute and the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria. Timothy Yusuf in this tribute looks at the immense influence and contribution of late Isa Funtua to national development. His report. If I may recall the statement of one of our elders, late Obafumiolo, who claimed that the worst civilian government is better than the best military government. That way it's enough. It's true. Nothing beats democracy. Vintage Ismaila Isa Funtua, the knowledgeable, humble and caring late elder statesman, veteran journalist and a life patron of the International Press Institute and the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, passed on 20 July 2020 sending shock waves across the nation as it meant a lot to many people across all divides. Tributes pouring in barely few hours after his demise show his personality and influence. To 85-year-old publisher of Vanguard newspaper Sam Amukakpemu, it is painful to lose his professional colleague and friend. Veteran journalist Undukao Baigbena, who spoke on his behalf, joined others to eulogize the man many say was a pillar that fortified the industry. We have lost a titan, a pillar for press freedom, not just in Nigeria, but around the world. What can we say? Uh, this is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and nobody questions the timing of anybody's death. But I believe that Nigeria, particularly the business and media community, has lost an illustrious son who has contributed greatly, both nationally and internationally. Even though he owned a construction company, even though he founded a short-lived newspaper, yet, till his death, he remained a strong defender of press freedom or freedom of information. Apart from professional colleagues, his contemporaries and family members spoke on the life and times of the Second Republic minister, business mogul and administrator par excellence, whose exit, they say, has created a big vacuum. One area that a lot of common people will miss is how he has intervened in countless activities and stories and uh, situations of people who needed it in order to bring soccer to their life. So this is huge. He has contributed a lot uh, in the area of press freedom, uh, uh, generally in the development of the media in Nigeria. We will miss him a lot. I've been with him for 41 years. And uh, as his boss, he's my boss, my uncle, so I learned a lot from him. The 78-year-old Ismaila Isa Funtua, a recipient of the national honor of OFR, left behind a wife and five children. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. 
Tributes have continued to pour in as prominent Nigerians and organizations mourn Ismaila Issa Funtua, who passed on recently. Elizabeth Omori compiled the condolence messages. President of the Senate, Hamid Lawan, has described the death of Malam Ismaila Issa Funtua as a painful loss. Senator Lawan expressed his heartfelt condolences to the family of the late Ismaila, whom he described as a business mogul, social political activist and nationalist. In the same vein, Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila has received with sadness the death of the former president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, Malam Ismaila Issa Fantua. Bajabiamila says Funtua lived a life full of service to humanity. Similarly, in a condolence message, Chairman Northern Governors Forum and Governor of Plateau State, Simon Bakolalong, said the death of Malam Funtua is a great loss to his family, the Northern region and the entire nation, considering his contributions to national development. The International Press Institute, IPI, received with shock and profound sadness the news of the sudden death of Nigerian statesman, media icon and IPI patron Malam Ismaila Issa Funtua. He will be remembered as the arrowhead of Nigeria's successful hosting of the historic 2018 IPI World Congress and General Assembly. They all commiserate with the people of Katsina State and President Buhari over the loss of his close friend, Elizabeth Omori, NCU News. Similarly, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has joined sympathizers commiserating with friends and family of the late Malam Issa Funtua. Momso Damien Dati brings us the next set of condolences. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa extends heartfelt condolences of the Federal Executive Council to the Funtua family, the government and people of Katsina State, as well as President Muhammad Buhari. The SGF describes late Ismail Issa Funtua as Second Republic Minister of Water Resources as exceptional in statesmanship, business, media practice and astute in administration. Similarly, Elder statesman Bola Ahmed Tinubu describes the death of the late nationalist as a sudden national loss as he was a rare individual of immense talents, abilities and generosity who contributed to the advancement of the country in his personal capacity. In the same vein, Minister of Information and Culture Lai Mohammed says the death of Malam Ismail Issa Funtua is a severe blow to the media in Nigeria. He extolled late Funtua's contribution to media development and his untiring defense of free speech and freedom of the press, a passion that saw him serving as the life patron of the NPAN and taking active interest in matters concerning the industry until his death. The Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, A. Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, on behalf of the staff of the authority, also condoles with President Muhammad Buhari, the government and people of Katsina State, the district head of Funtua and the International Press Institute over the passing away of Malam Ismail Issa Funtua. The Director General describes Malam Funtua as a prolific writer who demonstrated his dexterity as the managing director of the Democrat newspaper and as life patron of the newspaper's Proprietors Association of Nigeria and International Press Institute. They all prayed for the repose of the soul of the departed and for comfort and strength to the family he left behind. Meanwhile, the presidency has responded to what it describes as an attack on late Ismaila Issa Funtua by Omoyele Shouari as regards Shouari's detention. In a statement, the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, sets the record straight on Ismaila's meeting with Shouari in SSS detention. He says the meeting was not instructed by the government and nobody sent anybody to go and negotiate Shouari's freedom, as he puts it. He says, and I quote, The late Malam Ismaila on his own called me to ask that I broke up a meeting with him and two others with the SSS, which they agreed to. It is important that I state that it was the force of Malam Ismaila's argument that made the meeting possible. End of quote. The statement further notes that Vanguard newspapers publisher Sam Amoka and This Day publisher and President Nigerian Press Organization Onduka Obayagwana also agreed that Shuari had used his newspaper for vindictive purposes but agreed nonetheless out of camaraderie to press for his release. 
despite the fact that he got into a problem as a result of politics and not journalism. The meeting, the statement asserts, was successful until Shawari, who was also glad at the outcome, said his lawyer should come on board, thereby ending the mediation process. Grabashi, who advised Shawari to stop his distortion of facts and attack on a well-meaning intercessor, said we certainly will be forced to ask for the release of tapes in case they are available for the public to judge. President Muhammadu Buhari condoles with the All Progressives Congress, APC, family as well as the government and people of Kaduna State over the passing of Alhaji Umar Ghana Tuesday after a protracted illness. In a statement, the president recalls Alhaji Ghana's enormous contributions towards the successes recorded by the APC at the 2015 and 2019 presidential and governorship polls, during which he served as coordinator and member of the campaign council, respectively. The president praised God to come for the family of the departed politician and grant rest to his soul. And just before we go, here's a quick public service announcement. And that's a package on Network News tonight. Many thanks for being a part of it. Good night.